Um, so I'm going to just uh, show you how this new uh, RAF works. I've been having all kinds of trouble with this because what we're trying to do, this is a RAF that collects a load of serial numbers uh, when we remove uh, bogies from under trains and we collect them at the bogey overhaul, over, overhaul supplier and then we collect all the data in here. So what we can see here is that this is a big matrix of all the equipment that might exist on a, on a bogey. And uh, what I've got here is I have tried doing this in a live way. So connecting to the massive SAP data collection that we've got and to do this interactively. But the number of calls we're making on the back end really slowed down the wrap. So I've taken a different approach now. I'm using a process called wrap stack, which basically puts a lot of the lookup process into the back end. So what is going to happen here? So just to show you this, I'm targeting a wrap here where I'm going to do the SAP checking. So this is a separate wrap outside of this wrap and this does uh, the SAP serial number checking, which is to check that this material, this uh, item with a material master number of that and a serial of number of this, it's going to check to see if that serial number fits the material mask uh, and it's going to check to see whether it's got a record of that serial number on the SAP system and it'll come back with a result in this system here. Now you can see here that this, this works only partially complete because I haven't, in, I haven't put serial numbers in here yet, so they haven't been pulled through. So when I, my update instances is only going to update areas where I've got these two fields complete. And when those two fields are complete, I'll set up my target wrap and I can uh, create a wrap stack. So this is how we uh, load up the wrap stack. It says, are you sure you want to create these instances? And I say, yes, I am. Um, and so we can see that something's happening there. It's updating. And what this is doing now, this is now created a job on the back end, which I can go and trace in the back end. But if I just go OK to that, what it's going to do now is it's going to create uh, uh, one of these uh, wraps for each check I'm doing. So there's going to be a set, uh, one of these wraps for with this material master and this serial number. They're going to be checked in one wrap, and this is a second instance. And what should happen is when the process when the back end is completed, these plus symbols, which kind of show you that the check hasn't been done yet, uh, uh, this should happen automatically. So we should it should be a matter of just refreshing the page and. I'm hoping, okay, what's happening here is uh, this instance has been created, but it hasn't been auto calculated yet. So it says, yes, I've created this instance, but I haven't calculated it yet because we're doing two things here. We're creating the instance and then we're putting it on the back end server to calculate it. So this hasn't been calculated yet, but it has been created. This hasn't been created yet. So let's just see how long the back end process is taking. So I'm going to refresh again. I'm going to go back to this tab here. OK, now we've got two, uh, two, th these two wraps have been created. There might be some more further down. Uh, no, there's only two being created at the moment. Uh, so obviously this could be any number. Uh, and uh, whilst it goes through now the server recalculation queue, um, it should eventually come back with some results for me. So let's just check that again with a refresh. And it hasn't done it quite yet. Uh, let me try again. So each of these calculations is quite involved, really. So uh, it is going to take some time. Uh, it was quicker than this last time, which is always a little bit worrying. Um, I can actually go back onto the uh, server queue uh, and I might just check that now to show you where these things live on the system. So I'm going to go uh, to the site and to the manage. So we've got here the, the server queue. So this will tell me that something has happened. So if I look at uh, all jobs, so I'm going to show all the jobs. I'll put a filter on. OK, this is saying is that that wrap stack operation, the creation process has been completed and two tasks have been created. So they, they were the two instances that we've seen. So that's happened. 
And then we've got the server recalculation queue here. And if I click into there, this will tell me what's happening on the... OK, so what it's saying here is that those two uh, things that I've created, uh, I'm going, they're, they're waiting uh, to be initialized. And it hasn't happened yet for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, I might just refresh that page, see if the status has changed anymore. Or actually, I might force it through with a retry as well. So I'm going to just uh, click those both there and say, just try to do that for me, please. And let's uh, see what's happening now. OK, that hasn't that isn't processing for some reason, but there could be a reason for that. I'll check that later. What I can also do uh, is I can go back into this area here and I can force it to recalculate. So I'm going to do it now. And this is maybe gives a little bit more visibility to the whole process. So this is the separate wrap that's doing the SAP check. It's taken the material number and uh, so the material master and it's taken the serial number. It's extracted the mask, so the serial number has to fit that mask. So that is basically one, two, three, four, five, six digits, uh, six numeric digits, which we have. So it's passed the mask check. And then we've got a list. This is actually an enormous list in here. This kind of goes, this is all the uh, serial numbers that SAP is holding on to. And this is why the process takes so long. There's literally thousands of numbers in there. But what it's saying is, is I found this number 779866 uh, has been found. So the SAP check is true. So the result I'm going to post back is true, true, which means it passed the mass check and it's passed the, it, it, the serial number exists in the database. So if I go back now into the process and go back into SAP data, you can see that that true true result has been pulled through. Uh, so the uh, server re recalculation hasn't happened, but I'm going to I'm going to force this one through as well. Uh, and the same check is going to happen now. So that actually, and this time it's returning a true false. Uh, looks quite likely actually because it, uh, we've got six uh, six digits there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's fitting the mask. But we don't have in here a number 9999, and it looks like the kind of noddy data that I tend to put through anyway. So uh, what we've managed to do in achieving this, if I jump back now, the true false result will be brought forward. So we're going to back into this SAP data here. What's going to happen as we continue to fill in serial numbers, uh, we can continue to update instances. We can continue to let the server recalculation queue do its job in its own time. And these uh, these values will be populated. Um, what's going to happen at the end of the process? So once once all the serial numbers have been put in and when we've uh, recalculated all the instances and everything's been brought up to date, then uh, uh, the SAP uh, uh, the SAP controllers can have a look at these results and say, OK, that's a good result. We don't have to worry about that. And something's gone wrong with this. Now, it might trigger uh, an action on the SAP uh, uh, database uh, people. They might they might have to add this serial number because it's missing from the SAP material database or the other option, of course, is that this number is, in fact, what it is, is a, a dummy number that somebody's just put in without any due care and attention and uh, so but either way whether it's an input error or whether it's a, a SAP error uh, there's some further work to be done. So I uh, hope that shows the other thing to realize is that a, re a reload of this wrap that's loading this from scratch uh, is pretty fast now so uh, when I had all those processes working simultaneously within the wrap uh, the reload time was getting uh, too uncomfortable. And that's why I'm trying to throw the payload onto the server queue so that uh, the server can do its work in its own time uh, when, it, when, it, when it isn't busy. And when we, when we return to this page, it, it will always be updated. So two things to do. Uh, when we put some more numbers in is we'll hit the update instances again. That will create all the uh, server recalculations that will march through and eventually uh, all these values will be filled in for the whole table and for all the 
all the information that we're after. Obviously, we're after quite a bit of information here, but we can relax. We're not going to have to do it all ourselves in a live way. It's going to be done by the, uh, the server queue. So thanks for listening.